Okay, so here we're looking at uh, topic two, which is identifying properties when solving equations. So let's begin by looking at these properties. Some of them you kind of already know. Some of them you kind of you're used to seeing in algebra one. Maybe you don't remember what they're called, but um, we're going to review them and then we're going to talk about uh, how we solve equations using them. So first few properties to make note of the most basic ones. We have the addition property of equality, subtraction property of equality, multiplication property of equality, and division property of equality. So basically, what these mean is that you can do the same thing on both sides and it will still be equal. So the first one, addition property of equality, means that if you have an equation that's already equal, and then you add the same thing on both sides, because it has to be the same number, obviously, otherwise it wouldn't work. You can add the same number to both sides, and the result will still be equal. And you can do that for subtraction. Subtract numbers on both sides, the result is still equal. You can do it for multiplication. Multiply both sides, the result will still be equal. And then also division. You can divide on both sides and the result it would still be equal. You just have to keep in mind that you have to do it to both sides. Both sides, both sides, both sides, both sides. Okay, so it's very important that you do that. You'll see me, when I solve equations, I like to draw little lines down the middle because I like to represent both sides visually. That's kind of my, my thing that I use to help, that helps me. There are also a few more properties in addition though, but... Um, you know, these are the same four properties we just showed you, but here are some examples. So 3x equals 21. I can have 3x plus 7 equals 21 plus 7 because, again, I'm adding the same number on both sides. This would be perfectly fine. Subtraction property of equality, 3x equal to 21 is the original. I can subtract 7 on both sides, and it would still be the same thing. Multiplication property of equality, again, same example, 3x equals 12. I can multiply two on both sides and it would still, again, be equal. Division property of equality, uh, again, same example, 3x equals 21. I can divide both sides by the same number and again, everything would still be equal. But now let's talk about the distributive property of equality. The distributive property of equality is saying something like, you know, uh, if you have two times 3x minus four, you can distribute the two to both parts of that parentheses, 2 times 3x making 6x, and 2 times negative 4 making the negative 8. So these would be equal through the use of the distributive property. The symmetric property of equality means that the left side and the right side could flip, and it would still be the same thing. So if gh was equal to rl, then rl would be still equal to gh, that you can kind of reverse the order and it would still be a true equation. Um, substitution property of equality is, uh, okay, so it's kind of like these two things go together to then make this one thing. So if I said 3x plus y equal to 7, and then I said y was equal to 1, then substituting the 1 in for that y, you would have the equation 3x plus 1 equal to 7. So this statement and this statement are true, but keep in mind that the first one right here, this all goes together. It's one, it's one big thing. Um, because you have to take the equation and then take the value to substitute it in to end up with that. And then we have the transitive property of equality. So that means one thing leads to another leads to another. So if I told you that A was equal to B, and then I told you that B was equal to 6, then that would mean that A would be equal to 6. So you can kind of see how it's um, kind of adding on the information as we go there. If A is the same thing as B and B is 6, then that must also mean that A is 6. That is your transitive property of equality. So now... To solve these equations, we would use those properties of equality. But which property of equality would we use? So if we had a, 3x equal to 21, to solve this equation, we would have to divide both sides by 3 so that we would cancel out this 3. That means we would be using the division property of equality. I'm just going to put... 
uh, POE for property of equality. Uh, B, we have x plus 11 equal to 24. To solve this, I would have to subtract 11 on both sides, meaning I would use the subtraction property of equality to solve it. On C, we have x divided by 5 equals 8. I would have to multiply both sides by 5 to solve it, meaning I would use the multiplication property of equality. And then D, we have x minus 12 equal to 77. I would have to add the 12 on both sides to solve it. So that would be the addition property of equality. Now, E and F are interesting because they use two properties each. So 4x plus 3, for example, equals 27. I would first have to subtract the 3 on both sides, meaning I would use the subtraction property of equality. And then after subtracting 3, I would then have to divide by 4 to get rid of that 4. So we'd have the division uh, property of equality as well. So we'd have those two properties of equality. And then F, we have X divided by 6 minus 9 equals 11. So the first thing we would do is add 9. So that would be the addition property of equality. After adding the 9, we would have to multiply by 6. So it would be the multiplication property of equality. So those E and F have two properties each. So just be aware of that to be careful of that. All right, describe the property of equality occurred in each problem. So now we've, this person, this example, they've done the math. You just have to list the property that they used. So 2x plus 5 equals 13 turned into 2x equals 8. So they got rid of the 5, obviously, on the left side. And But what, what did they do from this first equation to the second equation? They had to have subtracted... Five on both sides, meaning they use the subtraction property of equality to solve it. Looking at B, we go from this to this. How do they do that? Well, they would have to have multiplied five on both sides to do that. So that would be the multiplication property of equality. C, they go from this Oops, forgot the 12 part. They go from this to this. So keep in mind, the x plus 1 is still the same thing. What they did was they got rid of the 3. They divided both sides by 3, meaning they used the division property of equality that time. And then D, they go from this to this. So they're clearly getting rid of that 5 which means they would have used the addition property of equality to get from there to there. Okay, so again, you have to be able to look at these equations, see what's different, and see what did they do to make that change, and which property was it that they used to make that change. Okay, so now we're gonna do that same thing, but we're gonna apply it to a full-blown problem. So here we have um, an equation, 3x plus five equals 23, and we're gonna list the properties that was used to solve the equation. So we're given this at first, which is why it says given. That's, that's given. But now you can see from step one to step two, they've gotten rid of this five. And the only way they would have done that would be to subtract five on both sides, meaning they used the subtraction property of equality to do that. And then from the next step to the last step, from step uh, two to step three, they would have had to get rid of the three, which means they would have had to divide that three using the division property of equality. So that is our proof if you will. All right, we'll do the same thing for another problem. So the first thing I see, so here we have the given equation. The first thing they've done is they've distributed. So to get from that step to the second one, they would have used the distributive property of equality. 
And then from the second step to the third step, they get rid of that six on the left. So they would have done that through subtraction, property of equality. And then from that third step to the last step, they get rid of that four. They do that through the division, property of equality. All right, so the equation solved for us. Uh, we just have to talk about what properties they were using. Now this one's backwards. This one, it tells us what property they're using, but now we actually have to write it out on the side. So I'm gonna put my work down here and then uh, see how, how I go. So that's my given. So I would have to use the subtraction property of equality next. So the subtraction property of equality means, how well, how am I gonna use the subtraction property of equality on this? They're telling me that I need to subtract on both sides. That's what I'm hearing. So what do I need to subtract on both sides? Well, I, I must be getting rid of the adding nine. So I'm gonna be, I must be subtracting the nine on both sides. Now, when I do that, I get the equation seven X equal to 35. So that must be what goes here. Seven X equals 35 is that equation. So now that I have the seven X equals 35, it then says that the next part would be the division property of equality. So it's telling me that I'm using that property. So I'm dividing both sides. So to get rid of, to get the X by itself, they must be getting rid of the seven. So I must be dividing both sides by the seven. So that would leave me with the X equal to five. 35 divided by seven is five. And that's our final result. So this is kind of the equation worked out. And this is the steps, if you will, of the equation kind of explained. All right, uh, again, we got a similar one. So it's telling us from the get-go, we have five times X minus two equal to 40. It says, okay, the first is the distributive property. So we're gonna distribute. That gives us 5x minus 10 equal to 40. So that must be this next equation, 5x minus 10 equal to 40. Then it says the addition property of equality. So I'm adding on both sides. So I must be adding the 10 in this case so I can get rid of the 10. So it's 5x equal to 50 is my next step, 5x equal to 50, or my next line, I should say. And then after I've done that, I would have to divide on both sides is what it's telling me, division property of equality. So dividing on both sides means I'll probably be dividing by five to get rid of that five. We end up with X equal to 10 as our final line, our final result. All right. Uh, so again, consider the equations and determine if they have the same solution, justify your answer. So this is very interesting because um, there's more than one way to try and do this. But if we read into the problem, we can try to figure it out. So the, we have 3x plus 12 equal to 24. Now, if you were to try and solve this, right, the first thing you would do is subtract 12. So you'd end up having 3x equal to 24 minus 12. Now keep in mind, that's exactly what this side says. This side says 3x is equal to 24 minus 12. So that means that these are indeed the same thing. So that one uh, would be yes. All right, with B, Let's see, they've got 5x plus three equal to 18 and 5x equals 18 plus three. It looks similar, but let's see if it would actually work, right? If I were to solve this equation, I would subtract three from it. So I would have 5x equal to 18 minus three. But this says 5x is equal to 18 plus three, which is incorrect. It would have to be 18 minus three for it to be true. So that, that one is no, it, those would not be the same solution. And then last one we have, very interesting, we have a 10x minus five equal to 35, and then we have negative five plus 10x equal to 35. So notice, I notice that both of these are equal to 35. So the question is, are these the same then? Well, 
we have a positive 10x and a negative 5. Well, with this one, we have a positive 10x and a negative 5 as well. It's just kind of written the opposite direction. But they are the same thing. 10x minus 5 is the same as negative 5 plus 10x. It's just these are written backwards. So since they're the same thing, right, that must mean that that is the same thing as that then as well. 10x minus 5 equals 35. If these are the same, well, we already know 35 is the same, so then it must be true. It must be yes, that everything is all the same. All right, so now solve the equation just by each step. So we're going to solve this, and we're going to write down our... Uh, steps as we go. So first thing I would do is I would distribute this 3. So I'd have, um, oops, 3 times 2 is 6x, and then 3 times 8, 5 is 15, equal to 27. So I'm going to write down the property I used. It was the distributive property. Okay, that's the distributive property of equality. And then after that, I would get rid of the 15 by adding the 15 on both sides, leaving me with 6x equal to um, 42. And because I added on both sides, that was the addition property of equality. And now I would get rid of the 6. So since it's multiplying, I would divide both sides by 6 to have my final answer of x equals 7. But that's because since I'm dividing both sides, that is using the division property of equality. So there was three steps, distributing first, adding both sides next, and then dividing both sides last. We have one more to solve, and it looks pretty intense. So let's do a couple things here. We're going to do, we have uh, distribute, we'll have 15x um, minus 5 equal to, again, we'll distribute this as well, 14x plus 6, and then minus 13. So here I'm technically using the distributive property twice. So distributive uh, there twice. Um, So I would simplify. It's not really a part of the solving process, but just to quickly simplify, we have 15x minus 5 on the left, but I can combine these terms here on the right. To have 14x, let's see, 6 minus 13 is negative 7. So 14x minus 7. So that's not really a property. That's just me simplifying these into that number. But now I'm going to try and combine some terms. So I have to, I have x's on both sides, so I have to move my x's to the same side. I always pick up the lighter one, the smaller one, and move it over to the other side. So the smaller one here is 14x, so I'm going to move it to the other side. I'm going to subtract 14x so that I can get rid of it on the right and have it on the left. And that's going to be the subtraction property of equality because I'm subtracting on both sides. So that leaves me 15x minus 14x is going to be 1x. I'm going to bring down the minus 5, and I'm going to bring down the minus 7. Now, I'm going to add the 5 to both sides. So I can get x equal to negative 2. But because I added on both sides, that's the addition property of equality. So really, there's three and a half steps here. Step 1, distributing. Step 1 and a half, combining like terms. Step 2, was subtracting, moving the x terms together, and then step three was adding the five, moving the constants together to get my final solution. And that's gonna be it for this video. Guys, I'll see you in the next one. There is a homework with this, um, so make sure you check the OneNote and to find the homework. Did I already upload it? I don't know if I already uploaded it. Um, I did not upload it yet, but it'll be here on the one note for you guys to see. Or it could be on August 20th. It depends when we do this in class. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.